Now let's take a look at some horizontal transformations. So once again, we're going to be taking a look at our f of x equals x squared. That's our parent function. Well, that's what we're going to be dealing with here. Now, for this one, I have a 4 inside the part that's being squared. So that 4 is actually being squared this time, whereas with the vertical transformations, that 4 wouldn't have been affected by the x squared that I have out here. Since that 4 is being affected by that squared part, we have a horizontal transformation. And in this case, notice how the, the graph looks a bit skinnier. It's actually being pushed in horizontally or compressed horizontally. So it's being squished together horizontally. So therefore, we have a horizontal compression. And now we have to think of our factor. Well, this 4 here is what we're multiplying by. Remember, we have to think opposite when we're talking about horizontal. So really, we have a horizontal compression by 1 fourth. Our, co our, our factor has to be between 0 and 1 if we're talking about a compression. All right, so since we're talking about a horizontal compression, it must be by a factor of 1 fourth. So when it's inside, we need to do the reciprocal of what we're multiplying by to get our factor. Once again, we're going to compare it to the f of x equals x squared. And this time I have a 1 half inside the parentheses. And when I'm talking about the parentheses, these are the important ones, the ones on the outside, because that causes the 1 half inside the parentheses to be squared by that exponent out there. Well, this time, it looks like it's a bit wider. And what's happening is, is I'm stretching the graph horizontally. So this is a horizontal stretch. Now remember, a stretch has to be greater than 1 when we're talking about its factor. So a horizontal stretch by a factor of, and if you think about the last one, how we flipped it, we did the reciprocal, we're going to do the reciprocal here, so I have a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. A very important rule to remember is a horizontal transformation only occurs when the number is on the inside of the function. So inside the part that's being squared, inside the absolute values, inside the square root. Whether it's added, subtracted, or multiplied, it's on the inside, and that's when you have a horizontal transformation. Otherwise, it would be vertical. We also need to remember that the change is the opposite of what you'd expect. So if I'm adding 7 inside the function, you're actually moving to the left 7. If I'm multiplying by 1 fourth on the inside of the function, I have a vertical stretch by a factor of 4 because I flipped that. So you've got to think opposite when we're doing horizontal. Let's try a couple examples here. Here I have the f of x equals 1 fourth x, and all that is squared. So that 1 fourth inside the part that's being squared causes it to be a horizontal transformation. Now I have to think opposite, so my factor is going to be 4 because I'm going to flip that 1 fourth, so I'm going to have a horizontal stretch by a factor of 4. I like to think of my factor before I write down horizontal stretch or compression. Now here I have a 7. Well, okay, I'm, I know it's going to be horizontal because it's on the inside. Yeah, that's good. And my factor is going to be actually 1 seventh because I have to flip it. So I'm going to have a horizontal compression by 1 seventh. Let's try a couple more. Here I have 3 fourths x and all that squared. Well, I know it's going to be horizontal because it's on the inside. Now when I flip that, I have 4 over 3. Well, 4 over 3 is greater than 1, so it's going to be a horizontal stretch by 4 thirds. And lastly on this one, we have a 2. Well, I know it's going to be horizontal because it's being squared. It's on the inside of the function. And I'm going to have a horizontal compression by 1 half. Remember, our factor is going to be 1 half because I have to think opposite. I have to flip it when it's inside the parentheses. Last two will be a couple combos here. Inside, I have this 3. That 3 is being squared, so I know that's a horizontal transformation of some kind. Well, I have to think, okay, well, it's going to be one-third because I have to think opposite. I have to flip it, so I have a horizontal compression by one-third. Here I have an 8. I'm adding 8. Well, it's outside, so that's vertical. When I'm adding, it's up or down, and I think regular, so I'm going to go up by 8. Let's check out the next one. I have a 4 inside. Okay, I'll have a 4 in there. That's going to be horizontal. I flip it, I get one-fourth, so my, it's my horizontal compression by a factor of one-fourth. And out here I'm adding one, because that's up or down. Well, it's adding one, so I'm going to go up one. Because remember, when it's a vertical transformation, we think regular, horizontal, you have to think opposite.